delivered me from the law. I still can't believe all the ways you've made. And incredible God,
Amen. How many of you are believing for it today? That God can still work a miracle. That God can still turn some things around. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for these young people again. Amen. 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 Unlimited possibilities, unlimited gifts. Amen. We mix our natural with God's supernatural. All things are possible. Amen. And y'all will catch that on the way home. Amen. Psalm 77, if you will. Psalm 77. Psalm 77. Psalm 77. verse 1 says, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice. He gave ear to me in the day of my trouble. I thought the Lord, my hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Say loud, we pause right there. You hold my eyelids open. I'm so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient time. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate with my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. Was the Lord cast off forever? Or will he be favorable? Will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his problems failed forever? Has his promise failed forever? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Say not. And I said, this is my anguish. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders. From that passage of scripture this morning, saints of God, I want to preach from the subject, what to do when it falls on you. What to do when it falls on you. Pray with me. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, God. Another opportunity to be in your house of prayer. Father God, as you allow me to stand in this sacred space one more time, God. Lord, as I have come to know that there's nothing I can do without you, God. So again, Lord God, this humble vessel stands, Lord God, in this sacred space. Look into the hills from which cometh his help. Lord, send your anointing now. Be with me now, God. Lord, these things you share with me in our quiet time together, God. Let me preach them now with power and conviction, Lord. Not that my name would be glorified, but Lord, that you would get all the glory. Yes, yes. Have your way, God with me, to me, and through me. Use these lips of clay, Lord God. Let this voice cry loud. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, amen and amen. 
Just for a few minutes this morning, beloved, I want to preach from the thought what to do when it falls on you. Beloved, most of us, if not all of us at one time or another, have had something to fall on us. Am I right about it? Yeah, most of us have had something to fall on us. If you've ever done anything in your life, you had something to fall on you. Yeah. It could have been something as simple as carrying a box and the bottom falls out of the box. And what's in the box falls down on your feet. Am I right about it? It could have been working on a car. Some of the, some of the men folk can, can identify with this. And, and, and you're taking boats off of a park and remove that last boat. Anybody ever been there? Before you can reach up to secure the part, the part falls. The gravity sets in, and the part falls on you. Ladies, maybe you can identify. I'm pretty sure some of y'all might can testify that there's been times when you have taken the pan or the pot away from under the cabinet or out of the stove. You lose your grip, and the pan or the pot falls. Amen. Maybe some of y'all can identify with that. I've seen my grandson, Casey, dunk his basketball. And his basketball goal, and the whole goal falls on him. I've been on jobs in the past when I worked at Commodore Homes. I've seen shells fall. I've seen lumber fall off racks. I've seen skids fall off forklifts. And I've seen that stuff land on people and people have to run from what's falling. Yeah, I'm going somewhere out with y'all. Y'all looking at me kind of funny. Just a couple weeks ago, we watched a cargo ship in Baltimore, Maryland run into a column on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And the whole bridge failed. While there were six construction workers working on the bridge, the bridge fell. And I don't know where they were when the bridge fell, working on the top or on the bottom. But either way you slice it, the bridge fell on them. Amen. Yet the bridge fell, the bridge fell, causing chaos and causing destruction. And beloved, that's the way life is sometimes. I come to tell somebody that life will fall on you every once in a while. Can I get a witness in here? If anybody can testify that every once in a while, life has a tendency to fall on you. Yeah. yeah. When the doctor says it's cancer, life has fallen on you. When the doctor says you need a transplant, life has fallen on you. When the doctor says it's debilitating and it won't get no better, life has fallen on you. I thought I could catch two or three witnesses right through here. Yeah, life has fallen on you. When a loved one dies, life has fallen on you. When your heart is full of sorrow, yeah, life has fallen on you. When you're perplexed and you can't sleep at night, uh, life has fallen on you. Uh, when, when you leave a job one day and you come back to the job the next day and you find out you no longer have a job, life has fallen on you. When your joy is gone, when your peace is gone, when your heart is broken, saints, I come to tell you that life has fallen on you. Do I have any witnesses that know life will fall on you? And as I stand here today, saints of God, I believe that all of us in the room have had life to fall on us a time or two. Uh, life can be full of ups and good times. Uh, but sooner or later, something in it will come tumbling down. Well, Pastor Elliot, why do you say that? Why do you say that something will come tumbling down? It's simple because the Bible says it. The Bible does not say that if you pay your tithe, all your days will be good days. The Bible does not say that if you come to church and do right, that you won't have any problems. But what the Bible says is that man's days are short and they are full of trouble. Life has to fall on you sometimes simply because the Bible says so. And beloved, when we look at today's text, I believe it gives us a good example of what to do when life falls on you. Here in our text, and I'm going to my seat, 
we find the psalmist digging for in a state of depression. Anybody ever been in a state of depression before? Yeah, I'll raise my hand to that. The psalmist is in a state of depression. And the text does not tell us what is causing his despair. But Sister Benita, as we read the text, we will find out that this brother has had something to fall on him. Yeah, this psalm is written by Asaph, one of David's chief musicians. And it's written to Jonathan, another one of David's chief musicians. Uh, these two men are two of David's three chief musicians. Y'all know at heart David was a musician. Y'all, David David was a musician. He has three chief musicians that he is assigned, uh, that David has appointed. They are appointed by David. And I shared that with you because I need you to see the point that I made earlier ago. And that is that it does not matter who you are or what you do, life will fall on you. Yeah. It don't matter. It don't matter who you are or what you do, life will fall on you. Not only will it fall on you, but it will throw you for a loop every once in a while. These are David's chief musician, and if you research the name Jonathan, his name means giving praise. In other words, these guys were praisers. They were praisers. They were musicians, and Jonathan's name means to give praise. But I reason with you this morning that even when you're on assignment for the king, even when you're on assignment for the king, even when you're doing the best you can, even when God is getting glory out of your life, life will still fall on you. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody that has ever been in the midst of serving the Lord? Anybody ever been in the midst of trying to walk right, trying to do right? You're doing all you can and all of a sudden out of the blue, life falls on you. When we look at this text, the songwriter lets us know that something is wrong. Let's know, Brother Chris, that something is wrong. Look at the text, if you will, for a minute, if you're still following it. Verse number one, he cried out. Verse number two, he lets us know that he's in trouble. Verse number three, he lets us know that he complained about his trouble. Verse number four, he lets us know that the trouble is so bad that he can't even sleep at night. And have I caught anybody up yet? Anybody ever been walking in any of these shoes right here? Yeah, the trouble is so bad, he can't even sleep at night. In verse number five and number six, he lets us know that when he thinks about happier days, he just gets more depressed. Oh, I'll drop it right now. Is there anybody ever been down when it's been so bad that even when you think of the good times, you get depressed in the season that you're in now? Yeah, I got one witness. Thank God I'll make two. Yeah, you even get depressed. He, he, he says his spirit is in a diligent search. In other words, he confirmed there is no peace in his situation. No way. There's no peace. In verse 7, he starts to even question if God's going to show up. Anybody been there? Start, I, I raise my hand again. He starts to question, is God going to show up? I, since I come to tell you, something in the life of this brother has fallen on him. And as I searched the room this morning, beloved, I believe some of us can testify that we have been in this brother's shoes. We've had to cry out. We've had seasons of trouble. We've complained about our situation. We've had some sleepless nights. We've been depressed, reminiscing and thinking about happier times. Some of us have had some stuff to fall on us. I wish I had a praying church in here. I believe that there's somebody in here right now, somebody that's dealing with some stuff that life has sent your way. But I simply come to tell you this morning, hold on just a little while longer. Yeah, just hold on. Because the songwriter helps us in the text. Three things I'm going to pull from the text and I'm going home. Three things that you got to do when life falls on you. Don't you ever forget this. Number one, don't get comfortable where you are. Yep, yep. It might be bad. Yeah. But don't get comfortable where you are. Right. 11 and verse 2, the songwriter says, My soul refused to be comforted. Right. But then I come to tell somebody that you got to refuse to be comforted in your situation. Yeah. See, see, I, I, beloved, a trick of the enemy is to try to get us comfortable in our season of trial and tribulation. Yeah, but you got to tell that devil he's a liar. He wants us to believe that God can't turn it around. He wants us to believe that a change ain't going to come. 
He wants us to believe that this is our lot. Anybody ever been there before? When the devil is on your track, he wants you to believe that this is your lot, that this thing ain't going to turn around. But I come to tell somebody, if God, it ain't so until God says so. Yeah, let me say that again. It ain't so until God says so. Deacon David, last time I checked, nothing was too hard for God. Last time I checked, he still had all power in his hand. Last time I checked, God was still working miracles. Is there anybody can believe him for a miracle? There is no situation too big, too hard, or too complex for the God you serve. God will bring you out. You just can't get comfortable in it. But let me come to tell you, too many of us have gotten comfortable with our situations. And when we get comfortable with our situation, let me tell you what happened. We start walking by faith. And we start walking by sight. What do you mean, Pastor Elliot? We start walking by faith and we start walking by sight. I know y'all been guilty of it because I have too. Well, the doctor said. Well, my therapist said. Well, well, the lawyer said. Well, uh, uh, my bank said. Yeah, I get what they said, but I come to tell somebody, it ain't never over until God says that it's over. It ain't over until God says it's over. So you cannot get comfortable in it. Can I give you some Bible and I'll go to my seat? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that when David and his men returned from Ziklag, everything was gone. The camp was gone. The women were gone. The children were gone. And I come to tell you, life had fallen on David. And David and his men wept, the Bible says, till they had no strength. Anybody ever been there when you cried and you cried and you cried till you had no strength? Well, that's where David was when you go back and look at that in Samuel. And after weeping, they even considered stoning David. Yeah, but the Bible says David, that David was distressed. But I come to tell you, there was something about David. David didn't get comfortable where he was. Now, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He didn't get comfortable where he was. But, but David made up in his mind that he won't have it. And I come to tell somebody, your situation might be bad, but don't you get comfortable. You got to make up in your mind and tell the devil, I ain't having it. I ain't having it. You got to make up in your mind, saints of God, that I ain't having it. The Bible says that David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord said, pursue. And because he didn't get comfortable in his pity party, because he didn't get comfortable making excuses, because he didn't come to get comfortable laying blame on somebody else, he took back everything. Somebody said everything that the enemy stole. I come to tell somebody, you can take it back, but you can't get comfortable. You can take back your joy. You can take back your peace. You can take back your possessions by pursuing God. But you got to keep trusting. You got to keep believing. You got to keep holding on to your faith. I got to go. Here's my second point. We're going to get out of here. I got to go. Here's my second point. Here's the second thing in the text that the text teaches us is you got to keep searching for God. In the midst of it, Jewel, you got to keep searching for God. Uh, uh, look at verse 6. Psalm writer says, my spirit makes a diligent search. Beloved, when life has fallen on you, you got to keep on searching for God. Too many of us have been in a situation for so long Man. that we stop looking right. for God. All right. All right. We stop inquiring of the Lord. Yeah. We stop crying out to God. Right. But how many of you in the room know that God honors faith and persistence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. tell your neighbor, God honors faith and he honors persistence. You don't believe it, let me call another witness. If we just look back at the very familiar story of Job, right. the Bible tells us what? That Job lost what? Everything. 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 When they say everything, it means he lost his wealth, he lost his health, he lost his family, he lost his friend. But he never stops searching for God. All right. All right. Why did he never stop? Because he knew that God was real. I tell you no well, when life falls on you, it is a test of your
your faith, it is a test of your faith. Job knew that God was real, so he never stopped searching for him. He knew that God had all power. That means God could turn it around. He knew that God could restore. So let me tell you what he did. He kept on questioning. He kept on crying out. He kept on looking to the hills. I come to tell you that Job was diligent in his pursuit of God to turn his situation around. I don't know who that's for, but you better be diligent in your search for God to turn your situation around. I come to tell you that Job's faith never once wavered. As a matter of fact, it hit his pinnacle when he made the statement uh, that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh, that's a heck of a statement to make. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I come to tell somebody, when life falls on you, uh, you got to keep looking to God. In the midst of your trials, in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your pain, keep searching because God is there. Yeah, that was a shouting moment right there. In the midst of what you're going through, keep on searching because God is there. Job didn't give up. And because he didn't give up, God restored. I come to tell two people, and I'll get happy for the third one, that God will restore if you keep on searching for God. God will reward those who diligently seek after him. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got one more point. Why can't we get ready to go? I got one more point. The last thing, saints of God, I want to leave with you is this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to my seat. Yes, Psalm writer, he helps us here with one more thing. All right, all right. He lets us know, Sister Jack, yeah. that when life falls on you, mm -hmm. and this is enough to shout about in itself, Mother oh, Wilson, that when life falls on you, well, you got to remember simply what the Lord has already done. I'm going to my seat now. Right. But when life falls down on you like a ton of bricks, well, you got to reach back and remember what the Lord has already done. In verse 11, the songwriter says, he says, I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. In other words, the songwriter is saying to Cole that when I look back over my life right. and I think about what he's already right. done for me, oh, yeah. my soul yeah. shouts yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. Be confirmed if you follow the text. Yeah. After verse 11, the songwriter starts to remember that God is a great God. Yeah. He starts to remember that God heals a wonder-working God. He starts to remember that God heals a strong time. He starts to remember that God is the Redeemer. He starts to remember that God has made a way out of no way before. I wish I had a couple of folks that could walk with me down through here. Is there anybody in the room that can testify that our God is a great God? Is there anybody in the room that can testify that our God is a wonder-working God? Is there anybody in the room that can testify that our God, he has been a strong tower? Is there anybody in the room that can testify that God has made a way out of no way to fall? I come to tell somebody who life has fallen on, don't you forget the works of the Lord. He is the one who delivered you before. He is the one who brought you out before. He is the one who set you free before. He is the one who healed you before. He is the one who provided for you before. He is the one who comforted you before. He is the one who restored you before. He is the one who renewed you before. He is the one who turned it around before. He is the one who worked it out before. He is the one who set you free. God did it, and don't forget about it. He'll fight your battles. He'll calm your storm. He'll rescue you in the midst of your trouble. He did it before, and he'll do it again. So when life, I said when life, 
falls on you. When mountains seem unclimbable, when valleys seem uncrossable, when waters seem too deep, when paths seem unpassable, don't you forget that. Don't you stop seeking God. Don't forget the works of the Lord. Because God, I said because God has never lost a battle. Because God, because our God has never lost a case. Because God, because our God has never lost a patient. He's never seen a problem that he can't solve. So the next time life falls on you, I encourage you to just hold on. One person in the room this morning that's got a heavy load on their shoulders. All I need is one person in the room this morning that's got some trouble in their way. All I need is one person in the room this morning that's feeling the pain of tribulation that will believe God like I believe God. That God will turn your situation around. That God will be right on time. That God's going to show up and he's going to show up, show out. Because God always responds to faith. I don't care what it looks like or how dark the cloud may be. The God we serve, I said the God we serve, he's able, he's able. I said he's able. If there's one person in here that can testify with me and say, won't he do it? Keep on believing, keep on believing, keep on trusting, keep on holding on, and God will make a way out of no way. What do you do when it falls on you? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when it falls on you? Come on, stand your feet. I'm done. What you gonna do when it falls on you? Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. You might not be there right now. Might not be your time. Might not be your time. Your cloud, your, your sky is sunny. Just as blue. But dark day is coming. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because the Bible says something. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Trial and tribulation come. Because yeah. the word says so. Yeah. But when it happens, man, don't get comfortable where you're at. Don't give up. Yeah. Diligently seek him. Yeah. Yeah. Cry out. Yeah. Immerse yourself in his word. Yeah. Immerse yourself in his promise. Yeah. Let it saturate your soul yes. and your spirit. Yes. And then don't forget where he's already brought you from. Yes. Don't forget what he's already done. Yes. All of us have been through some stuff in our life. Some of it just happened. Yes. Some of it we did to ourselves. Yes. Some of it we just we just took the wrong turn, yeah. we did the wrong thing, yeah. we just went in the wrong direction. Amen. We messed up. Amen. 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 We messed up. Amen. Amen. We've all done it. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we've all done it. But the God that we serve is well able to fix it. He's well able to make it all right. Don't get comfortable where you at. Diligently seek him. And don't forget what he's already done. You've seen him do. Even if you ain't lived long enough where he's ever had to do anything major in your life, you've seen him do it in grandma's life. You've seen him do it in auntie's life. You've seen him do it in papa's life. 
You've seen him work. Trust him in your seat. Trust him in your seat. What to do when they fall with you? Come on, we get ready to go. Come on, doors of the church are open. Man, woman, and girl, maybe there's one here today. You don't know about what the free part of your sins. You're not saved. You haven't been baptized. If that's you, why don't you come this morning? Yet by the blood is running warm in your veins. You have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Start your journey. Don't get comfortable where you are. Don't get comfortable where you are. I'll never forget how many times I listened to the preacher. Sat there. And the spirit would be pulling me to find pulling me. I've heard every word. I've been hanging on to it. But I was so comfortable in my mess. And I don't want to get my mess out. Don't get comfortable in it. I learned, I realized that I had to diligently seek God. That changes my call now. Maybe there's one here in the backslip state. Slip back into some mess. Slip back into some mess. Don't get comfortable in it. Do not get comfortable in it. Seek the Lord. That's you, you're in a backslidden state. Rededicate yourself to the Lord. Recommit to the Lord. Don't get comfortable. Get comfortable. Turn unto the Lord. Maybe there's one here today and you're looking for a church home. You already saved you love the Lord. For whatever reason, you're looking for a church home. But that's you and the Lord is speaking to your spirit. Why don't you come? The doors of the church are open. Man, I'm going to go over
so we diligently seek you. We won't get comfortable in the ways of the world, Lord God. We'll diligently seek you. And we'll remember how mighty you are and that you're able to do all things. Bless now, keep now, Lord. Set free, deliver now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we prepare to leave this place, but never from your presence. Oh, Lord, let the sweet remain of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us. It's forth and forever.